Hello, viewers, and welcome to the Research Spotlight. This is a platform where researchers and people in academia share their journey and the interesting things they are doing with us. And today's episode is very interesting one because it is our first episode and our guest is already in here. He is in the person of Mr. Dutin Asabedu. Mr. Asabedu is a PhD student at the University of Innsbruck and he is here to share his journey and all the stuff he's doing with it. Hello, Mr. Asabedu. Hello, thanks, Tisha. Welcome to the Research Spotlight. Thank you once again for the invitation. Great. So how is Austria? Yeah, as you know, we coping with the lockdowns owing to the COVID-19, but everything is well in the lot as well. I hope the weather is great as well. Oh yeah, for now there is no um, uh, coldness. The snow is all gone, so we are enjoying the sunlight. Okay, that's good to know. So, Mr. Asabed, can you um, tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, so in principle, I, I'm a Ghanaian, and um, I started my education, secondary education at Ramadan Sukuma in the central region of Ghana. And also from there, I moved on to Ken University to pursue physics. I, I mean, the bachelor level. So I majored in biomedical physics and work on a project related to effects of radon gas inhalation on lung mm -hmm. cancer. And then after this, I, I had a master scholarship to pursue um, nuclear energy in France and later on with industrial and medical application of radiations. And then I joined my current group at the University of Innsbruck and have been with them since 2018. Wow. That, that's interesting. Thank you for taking us through the, the journey. We already have one comment here. We have Anusha um, Telagatoti saying, hey, my boy. Yeah, so we encourage you guys to send in their comments. Okay, so um, what inspired you to consider um, career in this field? I mean, in research. Okay, so in principle, thanks for this question. Um, I think when we say, when we talk about research, um, people think, oh, uh, working with huge machines and some sophisticated equipment. But then research has been with us for a longer time. For example, uh, if we look at back then, I will give us a layman's example where uh, we purple in our heart to steal soup from your mother's, uh, yeah. fish from your mother's soup. So it's like you conceive the idea, you get mm -hmm. to which is the ladder, and then you have a final aim, which is to get some particular fish in the soup, you know? So, and <laughs> this is the driving force that drives you to pursue whatever you want to do. And so what, what happens is that you, at the end of the day, what you do is, so you take the initiative when you get the ladder, and then you dive into the soup to find <laughs> what is in there. And this is what uh, research is about. And Sometimes you succeed in getting the fish. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you are caught before you get the fish. <laughs> and then, yeah. So yeah, the that's West interesting. You have really brought the um, research into our our level. I mean, with the explanation you've given, I'm sure a lay person can even understand what research is. Yeah, exactly. So you have an idea which you try to use um, an equipment or some ways and means to get a, a, a solution. This basically it. And for me, personally, as a young child, I was curious and also introduced to books at a very um, early age. And for example, the library was my clubhouse where I go to our game center because I didn't have all this kind of, all I have about books. Mm. And at age 11, I was reading this um, Apollo 11 crew making the uh, mission to the moon. And so at that age, I was writing to NASA to ask them how to become an astronaut and all this. Yeah, oh, really? Means, yeah, for sure. And so by the time you are growing, all this is changing. But then with time, I became interested in medical physics, where I want to understand how radiation is applied in medicine. And then this became the driving force, which I've been trying to improve from time to time until now. 
Wow. So it looks like for you, I mean, you, you have been a scientist all your life, right? Um, <laughs> like, like from the story you've just um, narrated, you've been a scientist all your life. I would say, yeah, I've been interested in not only science, but in technology yes, and the way to um, make problem solving very easy. Because now we're probing and things are not as mechanical as before and one has to make things so feasible for everyone to or to make life so yeah life for the uh, ordinary person so cool and not so stressful you know yeah wow. so if you can find solution yeah that, that's interesting to know so at, at what point in your life did you decide to specialize in physics i mean you've loved science or nature or research all your life but at what point did you decide okay i'm not doing chemistry or mathematics or um biology but i want to focus on physics okay so the thing is uh, basically when i was trying to go into the university my interest was in mathematics oh. i'm i was not offered math because I wanted math because I wanted to join like uh, a Formula One back stuff where you do all these calculations and computations. But then I ended up in physics, which was even even had more advanced mathematics. Yeah. So for me, I seized the opportunity, and then when I found a new pathway, which is this uh, application in cancer treatment, I was like, oh, then I could also take this path. Wow, Th that's good to know. So. Um um, I think you didn't mention your um, your topic, your current research area. I know it's physics, I mean, but physics is quite broad. So what are you focusing on right now with your PhD? Okay, so my PhD um, is so in the area of um, radiation application um, um, to cancer. So what I'm doing here is that in when somebody has cancer or has a tumor which has to be treated by radiation therapy, what is normally done is that they use what we call radiation therapy. Mm -hmm. And here you use um, radiations. And this radiation generates what we call electrons. And the electrons interact with the body and then um, uh, has an underlying mechanism which further on seems to damage the tumor cells. But in order to make it even more effective, they use what we call chemical agent which we call as radio sensitizers. That's why in, my, in the poster you made, you said electrons and radio sensitization. And then this chemical then enhances the damage to the tumor cells. And so what I'm doing is that in the, because I cannot use the human body, we simulate it in the lab, and then we study this um, molecules that I use. Then mm -hmm. we study the behavior or the mechanism of action which it could, um, or the pathway which it could use to um, cause this radio sensitization and this is what I'm doing by mass spectrometry. I don't know how many of you know about that. <laughs> we characterize the sample behavior, that's it. Wow, that's interesting. So uh, in principle, the problem that your research work is solving is cancer treatment, if I understood yes, what you to find new um, molecules or new drugs which could be used to improve cancer therapy. So hopefully, if everything goes well, maybe in the next 10 to 20 years, we will be able to uh, have a cancer-free world, right? Um, this is quite a little bit, hmm. Yeah, <laughs> anyway. What, okay. what we, we, we anticipate to... is that you have a cancer-free, but once we have the chance now, the idea is to improve the current okay. uh, modalities that we are using by uh, finding the right uh, combination between efficacy and this radiation that we use. Okay, thank you. So uh, before we continue, we have Mamiya saying, uh, wow, beautiful explanation. And Tela Gototi says, uh, speaks like a true Ghanaian. <laughs> and Mamiya also says, go prof. Okay, thank you for your comments, viewers. So, Mr. Atabaydu, um, so far, what has been your major challenge with regards to your research work? I mean, what has been your, or even throughout your journey, what has been the challenges that you faced? Um, I think I had a few problems. For example, let me relate it to the PhD or even to the master level. Uh, I see problem from the outside because it was completely new field, switching from medical physics to nuclear energy, and then back to 
chemistry was kind of a bit hectic. But then for me, I find every opportunity as a golden one. So I put in my all and then try to expand the knowledge as much as I can and combine everything I've learned from childhood, you know, to now. And also I had to, so in, what I had to do is to collaborate with other students from other laboratories mm -hmm. and our group members also to catch up with what I don't know. And until I think 2020, where we were hit by the COVID-19, which interrupted my research. But even that, I found ways to overcome by writing uh, papers and prepare my thesis as well. So I, I didn't lose that much there. But the difficulty is sometimes when you change uh, environment, because you need to get used to the new setting over there. And this is always sometimes a bit, some, some part they don't speak English, some part they also speak. And this communication is sometimes a problem, but yeah, the work has to be done in the, in the end, whatever the, the conditions. Wow. That, that's good to know. So if we have um, younger people watching you who desire to take up uh, to take a career in research, what would you tell such people? Yeah, research for me is something that you do as part of you, you know. You have to dedicate to your all and it should be something like you opening up a business which belong, uh, open up a business which you personally think that, okay, this is for me, so I have to put in all my all. So, because if it doesn't drive you, it's not worth it. Because I can give an example where I wake up around 2 a.m., then I have an idea, I'm like, ooh, I need to go to the lab as early as in the morning because I cannot go at 2 a.m. So I stay away, try to find all means, and then by 6 o'clock, I'm already in the lab, trying to see whatever I thought about work. So it has to drive you all the time, and then you have to also have the heart to endure, because it's not easy. It's like playing um, a ludo, where somebody says, that, okay, the rules are you have a home kick, you have back kick, you have forward kick, you have labor, and all this. Mm. It can hit you from all angles. Yeah. But then the problem is that you have to be able to endure, you have focus, and then the confidence to overcome whatever, and whatever chance you are given, you don't have to give up. Yeah, people start PhD and after uh, two years they quit. Or even after the first year, they get confused and then they're gone. But what I would say is that if you want to do research, you have then to commit yourself into it because it takes more than uh, just a title, PhD or researcher. Mm. It's kind of devo devotion. Yeah, so apart from, you mean apart from being a very brilliant student, as in being a first class or second class upper student, you should have some other um, other skills. As in, you should be someone who is very strong mentally, very determined, etc. Right? Yeah, sure. Because and perhaps very passionate also. Exactly. Because if you you may be brilliant, okay, fine. But then you don't have the heart to endure certain hardship. Because, you, for example, if you have a very bad supervisor or a supervisor who is not nice, always pressing your neck. If you don't have this kind of endurance, you quit, no matter your intelligence. Yeah. So you always have to be on a, on the alert and have some personal confidence. And then also, you don't keep it to yourself alone. You also have to have a way to interact with people. Because if you say, okay, I'm keeping everything in, forget it. You okay, so uh, let me ask you a very personal question. So in your journey, was there a time that you felt like quitting? Yeah, for sure. I think that was the very first day I went to the lab. <laughs> because seeing what all the that machine, I'm like, I don't know anything about this. So what am I doing here? But then a guy came in and was like, ah, just, just chill. This is nothing. Just <laughs> read, read around and then you you get it. And there was some point where you feel helpless because you, as a PhD, you have to be independent. Mm -hmm. But then if you don't know anything and you also have to be independent, what, how do you go about it? Yeah. Yeah, so this is the point where but then once you cross this barrier, you become an experienced guy, you know? And that so, now, so now we can say you are well experienced, right? Oh, for sure. Now uh, I would say so. Well, that's no good. The, the arrows you throw, we, we are ready to catch. Great, great, great. That's good to know. So let's, let, I mean, let's run to the future. Now, what's next after your PhD? Do you have plans of going back to Ghana to um, to support the 
um, research work going on in Ghana or you are going to stay in Austria or maybe go to Canada or another country? Are we going to lose you? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Uh, this is a very hard question to ask because uh, normally we anticipate some kind of path line, but um, we never know what the tomorrow holds. But I love my country and would love to help in the growth of research. And should there be a possibility, I wouldn't say no. But if there should be other um, opportunities somewhere to gain experience and then come back and apply. Because you also, once you get to some level, you also go down there and then push others uh, to come, you know? And or even for consultancy to your people. For mm -hmm. me, going back home. And even with uh, with what you are doing now, I'm sure that um, when people watch and listen to your story, they will also be inspired. Yeah. Sure. For example, um, the thing is, when you come, not only that you want to go home, but you also need to set an example that your other people who follow you will have the precedence. Because if you come and then you misbehave, Nobody, you block the chances for other Ghanaians, you know. But yeah. Then for example, once you are gone, you can also recommend people. If you don't do anything, then you go back home. How do you improve it? Mm hmm Like, I get you. So, Mamiya says, be curious. Uh, be curious the right way. Wow, I'm learning a lot. Determination and discipline paid off. So, higher, Mr. Arthur. We have um, Matthew... Salomayo, sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name properly. And he says, congrats, Mr. Eugene. Yeah, so another thing we do here is also to celebrate our researchers. And we want to say that uh, we are very proud of you for the great and interesting things we are doing. And we encourage you to keep on keeping on. And we have younger people watching you and learning from you. And we believe that when the time comes, you would also be there to mentor other people, other younger um, students coming up who want to take up from where you you end, right? Yeah. Okay. So, what would be your final words to our viewers? Um, I think what I would say is that whatever you your hand find doing us, you have to put in your all. And research doesn't mean, there are some people who think, okay, PhD, you have to write a huge book and kind of, but it's a collaborative work sometimes. You don't do it alone. And then you also have people around who are always ready to help you. So if you are somebody who lost the confidence that, okay, I cannot do it, it's time for you to give it a try. And then you see that, yeah, this is it. But then also you have to know the right, channels how to go about it. you don't just pick anything because you want to have a title as a phd or yeah be called a doctor this mm -hmm. you will make a mistake you know but then yeah. make sure that you have the the requisite skills or you are ready for it and yeah when the chance comes just give it a try and i think we can improve life with whatever solution that we bring on board if not now maybe in the future well interesting if not now then maybe in the future. Mr. Eugene Tabedu, thank you so much for honoring our invitation and sharing your journey and the interesting stuff you are doing with us. I mean, we can't wait to have a cancer-free world. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. viewers, this brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you so much for um, staying, staying tuned and see you in our next episode. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>